Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Tester Certification. We are in chapter three talking about performance testing in the software lifecycle and continuing ahead with the part two of principal performance testing activities. As a part of the previous tutorial, that is the part one of this particular topic, we discuss about what are the major activities which can be actually performed as a part of the performance testing, but distributed among the entire software development lifecycle. And we also explored a bit of like what could be the activities from the performance testing point of view during the test planning and the test analysis, sorry, the test monitoring and control. And today we'll be continuing ahead and further to understand the other phases of the software development lifecycle or put together the testing process. To begin with, the very first thing today is the test analysis. Of course, you do have to recall from the fundamental test process as a part of the test analysis, we start analyzing the test basis. Similarly here, we will start analyzing the performance requirements and determining the overall test objectives of the performance. So effective performance tests are based on an analysis of performance requirement, test objectives, service level agreements, IT architecture, process models, and any other item that comprises the test basis. So now for performance testing, your test basis will be slightly different than the functional testing. For the functional testing, your business requirements, your functional requirements, or maybe system requirements are more than enough. In fact, when you talk about the designs, the core functional designs can be useful to you to produce your test cases. But when it comes to performance testing, the requirements of the test basis are slightly different. We mainly talk from the point of the quality characteristics inputs provided by the customer or moreover the performance driven requirements. For example, we talk about the performance requirements like what is the response time, what is the throughput, what's the number of users, what kind of environments you want to make use of, what is the resource configuration and the most important thing is environment. And putting it together from the point of parameters, we have SLAs, which basically defines that what will be the parameters and what will be their respective thresholds to test during a particular scenario. And all these parameters include hits per second, throughput, response time, and uh, the errors now per second, a lot many other things like that. So we generally go through all of them that what exactly the system is looking forward to and how we will be covering them as a part of our execution. This activity may be supported by modeling and analysis of, uh, of the system's resource requirement and or behavior using spreadsheets or capacity planning tools. So you do get tools to do this job to determine in terms of profiling that what exactly you would need to have as a part of the environment to run the performance test and definitely get the desired output. Also to add specific test conditions are identified as a part of the test analysis phase such as load levels, timing conditions that how long a test need to be run and transactions to be tested like whether it is about withdrawing money from an ADM, is it about mini statement generation, making changes to your PIN or ODP, a lot many other things or making a front transfer. So what exactly is that transaction which you want to cover and what are the transactions which are in scope? So you determine them. Okay, a user persona says that this person is trying to withdraw money and another person is trying to generate the mini statement and so on. So you will determine all these things. The required types of performance test will also be defined here, which will be definitely automated. And you can define it on load test, stress test, scalability, volume, endurance, spike. So you can define the scope of performance test that what all things falls under your bucket to perform them during the performance testing. On the second hand, of course, we do have the test design phase, which is all about preparing the scenario or writing the scripts which you want to run. So performance test cases are designed here in this particular phase. These are generally created in modular form so that they may be used as the building blocks of larger, more complex performance tests, which we'll be talking in the upcoming chapters in more detail that how do you do that? How do you create or design a performance test? But of course, designing this is completely different in terms of functional testing. Functional, you write some very organic test cases, but here you talk about the performance point of view that what exactly is user is trying to do, what kind of API interaction he will have, and how the API will respond to you for every single activity which you perform. And probably it's not just a test, it is more of a test script 
which will be further optimized from different point of view, like adding a screenshot, uh, verifying checks, and a lot many other things, which you will see slowly as you proceed ahead. The next thing to add here is, of course, the test implementation, that how do you set up everything to proceed with executions. So in the Im implementation phase of your test process, performance test cases are ordered into performance test procedure. These performance test procedures should reflect the steps normally taken by the user and other functional activities that are to be covered during the performance testing. If you remember, in our foundation level syllabus, we discussed that the test design phase allows you to write test cases, but the test implementation phase talks about writing the script for the automation. So in test design phase, if you want, you can write some high level orientation that what exactly a user prefers to do in a particular transaction. And here you will record or prepare your automation scripts for the performance test. A test implementation activity is establishing and or resetting the test environment before each test execution because the environment definitely would occupy the resources and you know con conquer the memory or take care of the resource utilization. So every time you run a new test, you need to have a method to reset the environment so that the allocated memories and resources can be released and can be started afresh from the beginning again. So that's where some of the key prospects should be considered, especially when it comes to the performance test execution. Since performance testing is typically data driven, that of course there is a lot of data to be used by different uh, users in a particular scenario, a process is needed to establish the data that is representative of actual production data in volume and type so that the production can be simulated. So you need to spend a little more time preparing the necessary set of data and how it will be distributed among the users. What will be the source of passing the data to the test? Will it be internal? Will it be external? If it is external, whether it is Excel, CSV, XML, or a file type like that, which you will be using for passing the data. You can always define them in prerequisites and make sure that you are ready to use them and set up a control flow, which will import the data during the runtime and pass it to the desired parameters or variable. Coming to the next is test execution, where test execution definitely is all about executing your test. And here we do the same. So test execution occurs when the performance test is conducted, often by using the performance test tools like LoadRunner, JMeter, or Silk Performer. There are a number of tools available to do the same. The test results are evaluated to determine if system's performance meets the requirement and other stated objectives. Any defects are reported even when performance test is conducted. So here the defects will be different. And of course, the details of the defect report will also be different than the functional defects, which we'll be looking into in our upcoming chapters. At the end, of course, we do have a phase in the fundamental test process that is the test completion, which talks about the closure of it. So as a part of this, the performance test results are provided to the stakeholder like after the summarization of the uh, upgradation, what you have done to the performance to meet the expectations, but you do create all the outcomes and summary of the result of the performance test being conducted to the stakeholders, including architects, managers, product owners, which you performed in a test as a summary report. The results are expressed through matrices, which are generally different graphs and monitors, which are often aggregated to simplify the meaning of the test result. Of course, you will finally conclude with an outcome that what exactly you have achieved by conducting as many tests as possible. A visual means of reporting such as dashboards are often used to express performance test result in the ways that are easier to understood by the stakeholders compared to a data-driven approach like the text-based matrices or data tables, which might be difficult for someone to understand. So you generally prefer to make use of a dashboard which showcases different graphical representations to highlight the performance outcomes. Also, performance testing is often considered to be an ongoing activity in that it is performed at multiple times and at multiple test levels. That means performance testing is not something which wait for the system to be established or system testing to be completed. Performance testing can actually begin much earlier right at the component level, integration, system, system integration, acceptance testing, it can happen at any level. But of course, I'm not talking from the point of applying the load, but 
normal checks, like the basic checks at the program level, like what's the response code, what's the response time a particular program is, can be tested at the component level itself. So you don't really have to begin from scratch. Only after system testing, when the system is ready, you can actually begin a lot of your prerequisite and simple activities right at the unit testing level. At the close of the defined period of performance testing, a point of test closure may be reached where design test, the test tool assets like test case and procedures, test data and other tests were are archived or passed on to the other testers for later use during the system maintenance activity. That means just like the other process of functional testing, here also we prefer to archive and store all the information related to performance testing or push it to the next team that is maintenance team to take care of it during the maintenance runs. We just don't ignore the details. We do archive them for future reuse. And also, we do conduct a small retrospective here to gather information which we learned from the performance test executions and what are the different ways by which you can look forward to improvise the performance testing in upcoming projects. This will be definitely different and standalone being conducted only by the performance test team. So that's where we talk about the different performance activities to be performed throughout the fundamental test process. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.